How's it going guys and welcome back to the Discovery and today I'm on the way to Ducati Preston because they're lending me the Ducati Scrambler Night Shift, the latest version, 2023 edition. It's the next gen Scrambler Night Shift and we're going to be taking that out and doing a review for it. So stay tuned for this one. This video was made possible with the help of Ducati Preston. If you're after a new Ducati or looking for Ducati servicing and upgrades, be sure to check out Ducati Preston in the link below. Okay, so here it is, the Ducati Night Shift Next Gen 2023 edition. Let's get in the meat of it and have a look at some of the specs. So the engine is an L-twin Desmodronic distribution two valves per cylinder air-cooled engine. You're looking at 803 cc's and it's got a ball stroke at 88 times 66 millimeters. Now you can tell I'm reading this off the spec sheet now you're looking at power you're looking at about 73 brake horsepower which can be limited so that's 53.6 kilowatts but it can be limited to 35 kilowatts to make it a2 license compliant uh, you're looking at 48 foot pounds of torque or 65.2 newton meters and it's obviously it's electronic fuel injection with a 50 mil throttle body with a ride by wire system on the uh, throttle whereas the previous version was actually um, uh, not ride by wire Got your standard stainless steel exhaust muffler with a catalytic converter. Six-speed transmission gearbox and you've got the tubular steel trellis frame that Ducati are kind of famous for. You've still got that in there so that's nice to see when some of the newer models are moving over to the monocoque frame. For the front suspension we've got an upside down Kayaba 41mm fork and for the rear suspension we've got the Kayaba rear shock which is preload and it's adjustable and also on this version the rear shock is actually mounted in the centre whereas the previous one it was a bit offset to the uh, left hand side. The front wheel is a bit different on the night shift version with the multiple spokes, looks really, really nice. 18 inch spoked aluminium wheel and the rear is a 17 inch spoked aluminium wheel but 5.5 inch width. Both front and back tires are wrapped in that Pirelli MT 60 RS tires. And as you can see, the front and rear brake are using Brembo's. The front brake has got a 330 millimeter disc, radial four piston caliper and the rear brake is a 245mm disc one piston floating caliper. So you've only got the single uh, disc on the front but still plenty enough uh, stopping power for a brake that weighs this much for a bike sorry that weighs this much dry weight you're looking at 176 kilograms curb weight you're looking at 191 kilograms fully fully loaded on the tank and you've got a default seat height of 795 millimeters but you can extend that if you're a bit taller to 810 millimeters with the optional high rise seat or you can lower it to 780 millimeters with the low seat accessory you've got a fuel tank capacity of 13 and a half liters which is plenty enough for a bike this size and you've got a really long and wide seat which is perfect for a pillion as well. The bike itself has got two power modes, you've got the sport and you've got the urban. You've also got ABS cornering, Ducati traction control, daytime running light, all that is included in the standard equipment. 4.3 inch TFT screen which you can do all your programming and all that for the bike on there. It also connects to the Ducati multimedia system as well. There is plenty of optional extras that you can get for this bike um, that you can customize it the way you want it. Uh, things like the Termignoni exhaust system, the Ducati quick shifter, different panels and different LED styles, um, optional front screens, all that kind of jazz. So you just have a look at the Ducati website, leave the link in the description where you can kit out your own version. Now let's get straight to the design of this thing and have a real close look at it. So the Scrambler range from Ducati isn't short of competition you've got the triumph range of scramblers you've also got the bmw is it r90 range of scramblers as well uh, but i think you can all agree the scrambler from ducati is definitely right up there in the way it looks that's what ducati do best and it looks absolutely brilliant notable things are the uh, multi-spoke rims that you get on the night shift version which look really really slick but gonna have to be a bit hard to uh, keep that clean because of all the so you have to get that detail brush out to keep it all clean but definitely worth doing on the night shift you've also got this really nice exhaust that kind of wraps up round like that and i think it looks really really slick especially when it's all cleaned up and polished up that looks really really smart how the exhaust snakes up obviously you've got that heat shield on there as well stop you from burning yourself and the um the engine case covers of the uh, that show the l twin uh, where the belts would kind of be uh, looks really smart as well you've got the nice silver embellishment all, all over the engine throughout it to make it really pop and stand out. 
and that carries over to the uh, clutch cover where you've got the black and silver kind of caps that surrounds and stuff like that. It kind of almost looks like the uh, X Diablo where you've got the um, the silver kind of uh, you know uh, accents that you've got on the engine case cover. So it's something Ducati do uh, you know quite often on their bikes. You've got the nice fuel tank there. As you can see, it looks brilliant. I think it's in this new over it blue. It's called new over blue. I think that's the right color. Um, but it looks really really sharp when it's very sunny. Gone a bit overcast now, so you can't really appreciate the color as as much as you can in the maybe in the in the video. But it actually looks really brilliant. You've got this matte kind of sides. Um, Ducati as well do um, optional. Uh, fuel tank covers as well for it if you wanted to change the color that is an option to swap out this and change it for a different color all of the scramblers have this nice embellishment badge uh, with the scrambler ducati wing logo on the sides as well to make it pop and if you have a close look at the fuel tank it's got a little born free logo from 1962 obviously harking back to the original ducati scramblers of old the fuel cap itself is very well made and, it's, and it looks feels solid and very reassuring that it's going to stand the test of time there was a uh, a little quirk with the previous version uh, of the uh, scrambler where if you put the uh, uh, the key into the cap uh, the fuel tank and then open it because of the way the key was designed it would actually touch the fuel tank but you don't have that problem with this one it looks like they fixed that in the revised version as you can see the handlebars are quite uh, um, different on the night shift compared to the other two models the icon and the full throttle where it's more like straight and lower down gives you a more like aggressive kind of looking stance when you're on the bike um, and it's got all the nice switch gear on there as well all black on black difference is also you've got the bar end mirrors on the night shift whereas the other two models have got the mirrors that come out from the throttle assembly um, but it looks really sleek and nice with the bar end mirrors it's almost like something that you'd probably do yourself anyway aftermarket so it's well worth having the mirrors themselves are actually quite big as well really good visibility out of them as well now the night shift does come with this really cool looking under uh, under tail like side panels um, to kind of cover up that gap which is not actually there on the icon and it looks really sleek as well and smart I think it's a nice little touch it also helps keep out the heat from going up your bum like on pre on other models now a nice touch as well that Ducati have done with this is they've made the license plate holder instead of having it under the seat where you typically find it they've actually made it uh, bolted onto the swing arm so it's out of the way and it hangs around the back there and it's a bit more sleeker and, and less noticeable than if you had it underneath the tail now if you have a look on the left hand business side of the actual bike you can see that it's got the black uh, engine cover and you've also got these nice silver slashes in there where it's been machined out now something to bear in mind is you want to really make sure you keep that clean and you don't want any after you've been out in the rain for example I wouldn't leave any uh, rain water on there from salt and sediment from the roads can really uh, corrode that so you want to keep on top of that and make sure it's nice and clean and uh, you've also got a really uh, large uh, kickstand as well it actually comes out quite a bit something to bear in mind is if you are pulling up to a curb because it does extend out quite a bit you want to make sure you give yourself enough clearance to give that room to put down of course I mentioned earlier you've got the Brembo brakes on this obviously only a one disc brake uh, on the Brembo on the front but it's kind of all you need for a bike this weight and it's still got plenty of stopping power really good really recommended now one thing they have done absolutely spot on with the new Scrambler range is they've got full LED everything. I'm talking LED front headlight, daytime running light, indicators front and back. They're all LED and it really makes them pop and sharp and really modernizes it, brings it up to speed with the latest models. So when you turn the light on, you've got that daytime, daytime running light looking really, really sharp. And as you can see with the indicators, um, they're all like, you know, LED and they're really, really bright and they look absolutely spot on and here is what your high beam looks like as well quite bright I wouldn't thought it worked that well with that X you know kind of in the middle uh, that you know is obviously there for a design aesthetic but it actually works quite well to be honest and it's very bright now the rear side of the bike uh, has got a nice brake light as well again all LED um, as you'd expect and it's still got the LED uh, indicators um, there as well to kind of match the front they look pretty much exactly the same yeah 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 they are and they look really really sharp as well so look really nice rear end and you've got the nice Ducati logo there on the back of the seat pad the seat itself comes with this nice level look um, really tough and uh, hard wearing uh, a dark brown pad and it really accents the dark blue uh, paintwork really really well and you can comfortably sit two people on there no problem and uh, you know I've been on it for quite a while when I was out on my ride out 
and it, I didn't feel uncomfortable at all. It's a really good seat. Now let's have a look at the infotainment system. When you turn the key um, of the ignition, you get this really cool uh, start-up sequence. It is a bit slow and a bit, bit long to kind of start up, but to be honest, it's well worth the wait as you treat it with that very cool looking brand new TFT dash. So if you're not used to, to Ducati dashes, this is how it works. You get the switch gear here where you've got the up and down arrows, and that's how you control pretty much all aspects of the actual dash itself. Very uh, decent size uh, screen, um, quite bright as well. Um, you've got a fuel indicator there at the top on the left, and you've also got a time a clock at the top right there, which is good to see, um, because some bikes obviously don't come with that fuel gauge or the clock so <laughs> it's a nice nice to have but then this is aimed at more commuting now let's have a look at the menus here okay now if you want to quickly change the riding mode all you need to do is press and hold the indicator button and that brings up your sport or road mode which you can choose between there and obviously it sets there your power high and your Ducati tracks control level one power medium for road and Ducati tracks control level two so you've got those options on there and you can edit what those uh, characteristics are of those two riding modes in the menu so let's just get back out of there if you press it just once then it comes up with the main menu so you've got riding modes and this is where you can edit you know uh, how much uh, Ducati tracks control you want on the sport or the road mode uh, as you can see you get a nice little graphic of the motorcycle as well which is nice to see but I'm just gonna not edit anything in there because this isn't my, not my bike uh, but yeah you can have a look at the info display there you can change what's, um, what is actually displayed on the actual uh, uh, trip meter which is nice to see so you got all those options in there too you got your fuel indicator now you can turn it into level or range I'm gonna switch over to range to see what that looks like let's go back there now you've got your daytime rendering light settings now auto is obviously it just detects whether it should be on or not depending on what the weather is like or you can turn it on manual let's leave that on auto and we'll go back here you've also got the display settings which allows you to change themes between dark mode or light mode so this is what dark mode looks like and it looks really smart look stealth um, I'd probably prefer it in this mode but if, it, if you are riding in quite bright weather then it's not quite as easy to see um, but yeah it looks really smart and it goes with the night shift theme obviously doesn't it you can change the brightness as well I'm gonna put that on max because I just chucked it on dark mode and we've also got a focus mode which gets rid of all the unnecessary information and just the essentials which is also a cool feature as well there's also a pin code there which most Ducatis have if you've not got the keys on you and you know the secret pin you can also turn on the bike. Obviously you've got your date and time and we've got turn signals here which have auto off or manual off um, you know settings as well which is quite, quite cool. Change the language there. And we've also got units we can change between miles per hour kilometers the same with like the different Fahrenheit or Celsius. Change uh, the miles per gallon UK or what have you you know depending on what country you're in. You've also got info that tells you about the battery uh, level percentage and then lastly we've got the service setting which obviously tells you when your next service interval is um, and gives you the history on that when it was last done and all that kind of jazz so pretty cool stuff a really really nice infotainment system and it's well worth the update on the new range right now I think it's about time that we do a bit of a sound check see what it sounds like Okay, that's enough messing about for now. Let's get this thing out on the road and let's see what it's really like. All right, guys, so here I am out on the new Scrambler Night Shift 2023. Now, first order of business is, as you can see here, I've only got six miles of petrol left, so I'm gonna stop on the petrol station, give this bit of fuel, and then we can crack on. Now I got some fuel in the tank and now I'm finally actually out on the road with the Scrambler and Night Shift. So first impression, let's talk about the riding position. 
Um, now the scramblers, they come in three different uh, models. You've got the Icon, you've got the full throttle and you've got the night shift. Now the full throttle and the night shift um, the same kind of price but you get some differences between them the night shift's all about more like styling improvements uh, whereas the full throttle is more about performance um, you know you've got the uh, is it the Akrapovic uh, exhaust or term Ignoni exhaust and you've also got a uh, quick shifter on that whereas the night shift you've got the lowered uh, handlebars um, so they sit a bit lower um, and it's a bit of a more like a stylish riding position you also got the bar end mirrors and some other styling tweaks so slight differences between them like that so obviously if you are not bothered about the uh, quick shifter and the exhaust then the scrambler night shift is the nicer looking one um, now riding position wise uh, they are quite similar between all the uh, scrambler ranges but you know you are kind of a bit more um, in a bit more of a dynamic kind of riding position with this as the, the handlebars are a lot more straighter a lot more lower down and you're kind of hunched over a bit more a bit more of a sporty kind of uh, riding position um, you know you got your mid mount foot pegs but you can also stand up on them as well you know and look forward if you do plan on doing a bit of off-roading um, or maybe some green laning but you know the night shift isn't really aimed towards that kind of style of riding it is more kind of a on the road um, but you know it, it, and, it and, and doing that um, is very comfortable um, you've got the uh, side bar end mirrors which you know what um, they actually are quite decent they uh, they, they uh, give you good visibility you know while still looking a bit sleek and still looking a bit custom um, now if you were bothered about having the quick shifter on the night shift you can actually have it as an optional extra and same again goes with the exhaust pretty much everything you can get in the scrambler range you can get as an optional extra separately so you can really customize and fine-tune the way uh, your scrambler looks the way you want it to look which is a really good thing about the scrambler range now the seat itself is a very large seat it goes back very uh, far as well so if you had a pillion on there they'd be comfortable on there it's a very comfortable riding position obviously I'm quite used to the XDL riding position where you are kind of sat a bit further back and you um, you know your arms are quite far in front of you but this the night shift isn't that too much different to be honest um, it is uh, a similar kind of riding position but obviously you've got a mid might foot peg instead of the feet forward like you do on the XD Avil um, and the XD Avil handlebars are a bit higher up you know they're more like here um, whereas uh, the night shift it's a bit lower down um, so you know that's just more of a personal preference obviously you can try the riding position on all three scramblers and see which one you like but if you want that styling kind of look the uh, the look of the night shift when you're on it is a lot nicer the seat itself is a bit firm uh, but it's not too firm and that's got a bit of cushion for uh, in there um, you know but I, they also do it in a higher rise uh, seat and they also do a lower um, lowered seat as well uh, depending on your height and preference so you can have those options as well um, but you know this one's probably perfect for me I'm about five foot seven and I can flat foot the uh, scrambler night shift very very easily so it makes me feel very confident when I am sat on it um, so that's something to uh, bear in mind if you uh, you know depending on what height you are you, you shouldn't struggle you know getting the right height for this thing so yeah as you can see here flat footed knees bent you know very comfortable and very confident uh, stance when you actually at a pause and um, so you know if you are a shorter person like me I'm not the tallest person in the world you know so I do like to have bikes that are a bit lower because it makes you feel more confident when you ride it um, and the night shift definitely does deliver that now characteristics of the engine um, you know it's, it is it is quite a modest power uh, level you know th this uh, i think it's like about 75 horsepower and you can actually limit it as well if you're on an a2 license so it's a great starting big bike um, for new riders and then that's the kind of market it's kind of aimed for it's like kind of younger riders as well or maybe people who are just like riding within the city and they don't really need a big powerful like you know 100 plus brake horsepower bike because they're not going to be able to use it the good thing about the night shift is the engine um, 
it's quite easily accessible uh, it's a very smooth engine actually for an L twin um, it's uh, you know it delivers its power in a very comfortable way and I've got it in sport mode here okay um, and you know it's a very smooth delivery and it, it, if you do want to give it some beans it is it does actually kick in at about four and a half thousand revs I think I'd say um, and that's when you it really takes off a bit but it's got plenty of power there that you need it if you want to blast it on some B rolls and stuff like that um, and, it, and it's got loads of bags of fun the engine itself has got a lot of character so um, you know although it might not have 100 plus brake horsepower the, the engine itself makes you feel fun while riding it it's got power when you need it you know a bit of overtaking power when you need it um, it, it, it never feels too sluggish when you do pin it back um, you know as long as you know it depends what you're using it for obviously I got it in sport mode right now um, so uh, it'll be even more you know chilled out in the uh, urban uh, power mode um, you know but again it kind of depends what you're kind of using it for if it's just like city riding out and about in town maybe you want it for your commute you know this is the kind of bike you want the very low profile um, bike as well so you can easily like you know filter through traffic throw it around dead easy the tires roll really well um, so you can easily fling it from side to side uh, almost effortlessly effortless effortlessly <laughs> I can't get my words out right um, and it's very lightweight as well so you know if you are a smaller person then that's what it's uh, it, again that that the lightweightness of it really does help with your confidence when you're on the bike you know um, you and it does um, it, it almost wants you to go through the traffic it, you know and filter through it, it like uh, you know it wants you to kind of take those aggressive kind of turns and just quick quick decisions um, you know change uh, uh, direction because it is very agile um, and and I like the clearance of it as well like you know uh, with the, with the wheels between the um, uh, the height of the wheels between the, the belly pan um, it has got a nice clearance to it as well so you, you know like I said if you do want to you know jump up a curb or whatever you won't worry about bottoming it out or anything like that now the Brembo brakes work really well as well you know obviously it's only a one disc Brembo at the front but to be honest for the weight of the bike and the power it's got that's all you kind of need it's a very good quality braking system uh, when you do grab the uh, the brake it's not too snatchy um, so you know it does kind of deliver it very like smoothly as well so you're not gonna you know uh, get surprised by it if you do just do an accidental you know uh, trigger pull grab um, so you know you'll be all right with that um, the rear brake is quite soft it's probably a bit too soft for my liking you do have to press quite hard to um, really feel it engaged but I mean that might just be because it is a brand new bike this one a demo unit with only 96 miles it might just need bedding in a bit um, but the uh, yeah all together no issues with the brakes really at all one thing I would say is this uh, the clutch lever by default position it is out a bit far so you do have to it's got quite a lot of travel in it so you do have to pull it quite a lot uh, further back to actually um, get it to engage properly um, but obviously it's got this adjustment here so you can tighten it up a bit and that's what I'd probably do if, I, if this was my bike now one thing I would probably say is that the uh, exhaust note itself is quite you know being the stock exhaust it is quite reserved and very very chilled out um, I think it would definitely benefit from having that aftermarket exhaust in there because you can actually hear more of the engine itself than the uh, exhaust note growl which is a bit of a shame because the actual exhaust you can hear it every now and then it just makes the odd uh, pop and crackle and little uh, you know like backfire noise um, and it'd be nice to actually get that out properly if you had that aftermarket exhaust so that is one optional extra I would definitely recommend okay now since the sun's come out a bit I'm going to just park up somewhere and just do a quick walk around here okay so here is the scrambler night shift 2023 um, it's a very cool ride what I have noticed is when um, you know uh, it's kind of the same with all Ducatis really especially the uh, air-cooled ones is after you've been riding for a bit and you know you're doing stop start traffic slow kind of um, uh, 
uh, movement um, you know the it does kind of get a bit warm um, so it does obviously want to go and it kind of does emit that bit of a that engine kind of warmth smell but as soon as you start riding it cools down straight away I suppose that's the whole point you just want to you just want to uh, keep riding this thing they have added these uh, panels here which does actually help with the heat so you don't get so much heat uh, underneath the seat like you do on uh, other uh, models and the as you can see the engine is a bit um uh, further forward so you're not getting all that engine heat di directly up into the seat because it's more kind of underneath the tank um, so it does keep it a bit cool there but you know I think it looks absolutely brilliant when the sun's shining on it um, and I love these uh, daytime running lights they look really really slick as well and they're always on even when the bike is in standby mode and then you know kind of turns itself off um, but uh, yeah, I, I really like this thing and how easy it is to kind of jump on, jump off, throw it around. Um, one thing is the side stand does come out quite a considerable amount. So if you are trying to park up close to a curb, you have to bear that in mind that you need enough room to put the side stand. It does come out quite a, uh, 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 you know, quite a distance from the bike, as you can see. Um, but yeah, great looking piece of kit, great looking bike. Um, let's hop back on it and carry on. So I'm just going to give you an idea of pinning it back. Here I am in first gear. And what you'll notice is actually when you hit that 6,000 RPM, it gives you a shift indicator as well, which is really cool. Now the great thing about the power of the, the Scrambler engines is you know that they're not too powerful where you'll get yourself you can find yourself looking down all of a sudden you're doing illegal miles an hour and you get yourself in trouble and they're not too uh, low power where you can't have a bit of fun it's a great range of power so you can have a bit of everything on it really um, and it's perfect for the rows they're quite underrated bikes in my opinion and not enough people you know give them the credit that they deserve but you know I'd always recommend someone to actually get out there get yourself down to your local Ducati dealership and you know test ride one of these because you might find that it has got plenty of power and it's perfect for the roads or wherever you live and you don't need to be going for all these ridiculous you know uh, V2 uh, sport bikes or V4s and stuff like that to have a bit of fun this is a very manageable accessible power and that's great across the whole rev range so that's pretty much it now for my review of the Scrambler Night Shift 2023 edition. Let me know what you think in the comments um, and I'll put a link down to Ducati Preston where you know if you want to get a hold of one of these or any other bike for that matter then you know give them a shout. There's also a link to a competition where you can win your own Ducati as well if you want to have a go at that with BOTB and obviously if you want to know any of my setup that I've used to get this video done all the links are all there in the description. Um, so hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you on the next one.